Look, guys, there's like these days where everything you do is just perfect. Like you can't put a foot wrong. Every trade you take works out for you right away, just like you drew it up in your mind. And then there's these days when it's the complete opposite. Like everything you touch, it just turns to crap. You can't even get out of your own way. You're like this hamster on a wheel. And I'm going to say that's the way my day was today. After having such a huge day yesterday, I followed it up with a pretty bland day. I had a couple of good trades, a couple of bad trades. Finished slightly in the red. I'll probably make that back on the next trade. But I want to talk about this for a second because I think a lot of you guys go through this. And when I say a lot, I'm talking about the aspiring trader, the new trader, and the struggling trader that you feel that you have to make a certain amount of money every day. And I want to let you know that what pro traders go through emotionally and what they experience with the market is the exact same things that you go through and you experience with the market. The only thing different is how the pro reacts to what is happening in front of them versus how the amateur does. So for example, I knew early on, based on the stuff that we talked about yesterday in the mutterings, the setups, the way things, what I wanted to happen, the way I looked at things happening, what I had rehearsed, just didn't quite work out. Then the trades I got, I noticed early on that, hey, you know what, the behavior, the way these stocks have been acting lately as I have been trading them isn't the same. It's not the same today. It's a little choppy. I'm getting some different looks. I was able to recognize that, reduce my share size, mess around with a couple of positions, and later on said, look, I just don't have a definitive edge where I'm going to make a lot of money today. And then I just backed off, and that was, that was it. I'll, I'll save my bullets for another day. But the amateur trader often will try to force that because it's hard. You, 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 if you have a really huge day, you make 1500 2000 or whatever it might be one day, you expect that every single day for the rest of the week, the rest of the month, the rest of the year is going to be just like that. That the market is always going to be fruitful with its opportunities, and it just doesn't work that way. And one of the biggest things that will take you from pro, struggling, losing, to, to really big money will be recognizing that. And that's not just the day, it's the trades. You get into a trade, and you realize, hey, you know what? This thing isn't acting like it normally acts. This setup isn't behaving like it normally behaves. You cut the position. You just let it go, and you're better to be safe than you are to be sorry. Whereas an amateur may fight it out. An amateur may feel that need, say, look, I've got to make X amount of dollars. I need to be in a trade. I have to make something happen. And that's normally what leads you into this humongous amount of damage. Because remember, every, dam every piece of damage that you do, every loss that you take, you're going to have to make that money back to be profitable. So it's on days where you don't have a definitive edge and things aren't working for you the goal number one right there is to not do, you know, extreme damage. Don't do damage where you can't recover from it. And that's a big problem that a lot of people go through, especially in their early years. I was one that went through that. You try to force stuff and then you turn around and you give back massive days or you realize you put yourself in a hole and you're like, shit, it's going to take me, you know, six, seven days of really quality stuff to make this back. You don't want to be in that situation. Okay. You don't want to be in that situation. Remember, you only trade when you have a definitive edge and you have the right kind of opportunities. If the market's messing you around, just stand back. The market will be open tomorrow. It'll be open the following day. It'll be open next week, next month, next year, the next hundred years. Opportunity will come back. The edge will come back. Just be patient. Don't force things. So let's talk about it. What did happen? Well, I'm going to go with NVIDIA here because I talked about what I wanted to happen. Here's the chart. I got NVIDIA's chart up. Yes. I wanted it to really break out and get vertical, possibly gap up and then rip probably around 295 to short it. And when I say short it, look, I got nothing against Nvidia. Don't don't uh, don't jump on me, coolators, Nvidia lovers, bag holders. I like it. I've made a lot of money. We longed it yesterday. It was a great trade. But I was thinking, man, if it got up there 3 days stretched, I think I'd be better off going short. I didn't get that look. I got this open where it kind of, look at these candles. It kind of bounces from 288 to 291. Then it sells all the way down to 287, then snaps back. So when it gets up here, I'm like, you know what? I think they want to, you know, the, the I did not think. I, I'm looking at the chart. I'm looking at everything. It's like, hey, this 292 is holding. It really looks like this stock wants to go. I mean, it, it feels like it wants to go. It's holding. It's consolidating. Every dip is getting bought. So I give it a go. And it just kind of comes up here. And the thing that I noticed first was that this breakout right here, this is 750 that I'm looking at, 750 time, that's Pacific Coast time, is that it breaks out right here at the highest 292.70s. And normally when NVIDIA breaks out, it just goes. I mean, this thing just launches and people chase it. 
And it didn't do that. It just stalled. And that's what I talked about the behavior. I'm like, that's just not NVIDIA-esque. That's not what NVIDIA does. Now, maybe eventually it does break out and it fools you. That's okay. But I'm looking at it and I'm like, this, is, this isn't acting right. I'm out of it. I picked up a few hundred bucks on it. Turns out to be a pretty good idea because then it gets just sauced and sells off. Then when it gets down here, I'm like, well, it's late in the day. Let me see if I can try to bounce this thing a little bit. Nah, they weren't really interested in NVIDIA. Now, it might be a completely different story tomorrow, but this is one of the things I wanted to focus on, excuse me, in this mutterings is that you learn this through screen time and experience with your trades. And I just felt, look, man, this thing just isn't acting like it was. I got to get out of it. And that's that. The other one was Netflix. This was a pretty good one. I felt this was the better one to go long between this and NVIDIA. And the reason for it was because of this daily. If you look down here at this daily chart, it broke out from this short term. This is a pretty good consolidation because you're not consolidation. Excuse me. This is a pretty good resistance because if you look at this, this earnings gap down bounce, I'm going to just draw this line across. Here. I think it's 382.57. You look right across that. Yesterday, it broke out through that and we had that position. I was thinking, okay, this thing's going to rip pretty good now that it's finally cleared that daily chart resistance. Same thing. It did, it did but then it didn't quite just keep going like it normally does it didn't get vertical it sold off so i was thinking all right well maybe yesterday wasn't the right day for it maybe that's going to happen today i got into this thing it, it it bounced up here pretty good i picked it up off of the support when it came down into this base of support and it bounced and it got back up there i was really wanting that thing to just get through there and it wasn't able to do it now one thing i don't really like too much is these v-shaped rallies they're hard to sustain sometimes and if you guys don't know what i'm talking about that's this kind of movement where it rips, pulls back, and then just comes right back like a V. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it, it was a profitable trade. But again, it was kind of like, you know, NVIDIA just wasn't behaving like it normally does. And look at these candles. This was a little bit erratic. There's other days where this thing has a lot cleaner behavior, a lot tighter movement. So it just, this one was kind of like a dud. Just, it, it faded. It just wasn't, and not only did it fade, it really faded. Just like, nvidia it really faded so the kind of the point here is you may think in certain times with your trading like i just don't want to take this loss right now maybe you've had three or four losses in a row you're like i can't take another one or you look at it and you're like I, I can't accept this loss i don't want to accept this loss i am right i know i'm right i gotta stay oftentimes your hunch about when something is in it and it's not working that's a, that's a good indicator so you've got two trades here was netflix and nvidia both were very small gains, just a few hundred bucks, but it could have been a lot worse if I would have decided to hold on to these trades. And then they just kind of like sold off a little, you know, not, I wouldn't say these are down huge. One of the bigger selling days they've had in a while, but you know, you, you could be in a, a big problem. It could sell off a lot and they did, they faded. So it was a good thing to get rid of those Netflix and NVIDIA. And the really big, the, the stock that's been behaving well for me or the one that I've really been doing well with has been Boeing. I'm like the short master on this thing right now. This is kind of the look I was hoping that NVIDIA was going to give, was where you stretch out, you break over the highs, and then you get vert. It did that, and I was able to, I mean, I got the perfect spot, the perfect entry on this thing here, and then covered up this position. I mean, it was a good trade, and that's like the third or fourth one over the last two days that the that I've got. And I love these types of trades. I love these ramp ups. I love these spike parabolic shorts. Again, it's a stock I would love to buy at some, sometimes, but it never set up for me for what I do. It didn't set up as a buy. So sometimes when things do get stretched and they do get away with you, we talked about this yesterday, they do get away from you, you miss a long, then maybe there's an opportunity to, to go short. Sometimes these longs get crazy and people get euphoric and they start piling in and they chase these things. And you, you look at a move from an open move from 381 to 387. I mean, you're talking about $7 straight with virtually no pullback whatsoever. That's top side of range for something like that. That's, that's a lot. That's going to be hard for that thing to continue to sustain that trajectory for the remaining of the day. So that one's been good. Now, I will always give my bad as well as my good. What really hampered my day was TTD. TTD. Now, I've had a lot of success with this stock over many periods of time but today I didn't have any success with mr. TTD this is a trade I like is when you have a big momentum stock like a Wayfair you can pull up the charts maybe pull Wayfair up here for you yeah like Wayfair 
it's doing the same thing. These, these stocks are in these monster runs over long periods of time, and then they have these washouts or these heavy sell downs. They can be really good for buying the dip on. You're usually going to find these things to, to, to find a bottom and bounce. Now, I was tweeting about this one earlier, and if I can re-edit this, I'll put the tweet up there. I was looking at this down here at this support. You look on this daily chart, and you've got 135, really big support. And this thing's been selling off good, too. 158, now down to 133. I mean, this is, this is a nice, robust sell-off. But I was thinking, man, if we get down to this 135, we're going to get a nice little bounce. Or we have the potential to get a nice bounce. It didn't really work that way because it gets down to 135. You can see it makes its first bounce right here. This one was nice. This was good timing on this one right into that 135. And again, for you guys that are just learning this whole thing, this is what it's all about. There's not, there's no secret as to why this stock bounced at 135 while it was going down. That's big support on the daily. So you're probably going to get some defense down there just on a technical basis. But then I was kind of hoping this thing or looking, I don't want to say hope, but I was, my, my strategy was for this to go green. Cause I kind of, again, I cheated on this one. I didn't wait to the 135 and I wasn't patient. So I jumped in a little bit early. So I had a really poor average when it, when it turned out. And it bounced back up there, got close to my average, then it just down she goes, and then it gets back down to this area, and it, it haggles with it for most of the day, and then finally gives it up, and I had to cut most of that position for for a loss. That was that was the one that really kind of put me in the red for the day. It just it just didn't go. So I, I'll look at this one tomorrow. I mean, all in all, I mean, again, this is the way it is. Sometimes you have to be able to recognize this so if you look at the position size again i'm going to try to put these up here i'm using a different software today for this but i'll try to put the timing and sales up here and my entries and all that good stuff for my brokerage account you just have to take smaller size if you're really compelled to trade and i've always said you know if you don't rank you won't bank you, you have to rank every trade like you have a tier one trade which is a super premium awesome setup then you have tier twos which is like that's eh, not quite there but i have a hunch i think so and then you have tier threes on down you want to be able to put all of your not all of your money but you want to be able to put max risk on tier one trades on the really primo hands that you have and then if you really you don't have to take tier twos and threes if you want to be patient which most of you should be but in that event that you feel like I must be in a trade, I have to, then just put a few shares on it, like five, if you're just absolutely desperate to take a trade and you can't control yourself. But over time, that, that kind of behavior is going to cause you some problems. So, again, I kind of made a couple of mistakes here. I cheated on this one a little bit, got in too early. Uh, so this could have been a small gain or been a lot better position to have a lot more resources if I wouldn't have done that. But I did. All in all, lost a few bucks. I'll make it back. I've been through this. But I want you guys to know that. That's the important thing to take away from this is that not every day is going to be a good one. You have to recognize that. And remember, the market will be open tomorrow. It's not a big deal. You know, as long as you don't do a lot, as long as it's recoverable, you'll get it back. Everything is fine. It just comes with the territory. Now, if we look tomorrow, I mean, this market faded out real big. And the, and the, and the weird thing was for a market that was like the, the Dow was up 150 points, breaking out to all-time highs, and then like three-fourths of my watch list was red. I mean, it's just buried in the red. The one I want to look at here for tomorrow is Apple. Now, I didn't take a shot at Apple because it was already up a lot. It was up 250, 260. I was like, ah, I'm just not feeling this thing wants to kick it. But this is a daily chart breakout right here. This this 230 was a big problem for this today. I mean, look at that daily chart. Now, normally, I say, let me put some air quotes. Do, 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 do. Normally, when Apple hits an all-time high, it rolls. We're going to see. It doesn't mean it's going to work out this time. But it did get sold off a little bit when the market pulled back, NASDAQ pulled back, and a couple of others. But it came right back. Really sharp rally here. Look at that V-shaped sharp rally right here. Let's look for that 230. That's going to be an important move. If you're able to catch that early then I think this this trade has a possibility to deliver a couple of bucks, probably 233s, 235 maybe. You'll probably see a nice little move out of that, barring any surprises. Maybe there's some news or something like that on the market or something, or the sector's weak. Who knows? But keep an eye. I really, really like the way this thing looks. And like I said, normally it does break out when it gets to situations like this. That's going to be like my top look there for tomorrow is that 
230. Now, if it gaps up above 230, don't do it. Don't do it first thing in the morning. Wait a little bit. Let it build a pattern. Let it get some structure and then take a look at it. And of course, BA, I got to say, man, BA closed pretty strong. If this thing goes another day and you get me up around 390s early in the morning, I'm going to short it again. I'm going to short every single ramp on this thing. And then I guess if it flushes, I would probably look at a buy. So anyway, let's leave it at that. Let's leave it at that. If you guys have questions or anything, you can always send them to me. Support at the LincolnList.com. Remember, only trade when you have an edge. That every single loss that you guys take, you got to make that back. You got to make that back to be profitable. So remember, every stupid move that you do, every idiotic revenge trade, every dumb thing that you did comes with a consequence. And you're going to have to make that money back. But the real problem with that is that if you do that for long periods of time, you're going to develop that as a habit. It's just going to be a natural reaction. And then when it gets to that level, you're going to have some serious problems. I mean, big problems trying to kick that out of your little habit zone. So anyway, that's going to do it for me, guys. I want to thank you for watching this video. As always, you trade well, and I will talk to you tomorrow.